Jase. Uh, we've, we've had a few questions about gas in motorhome. Huh? So could we do a quick explanation of the different gas? No. Come on. You stayed in here because it's warm, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's freezing today, isn't it? it is <laughs> we've had snow earlier on. Well, it was like sleep. So shall it? we give everybody crash course yeah. of LPG? Yeah. Just, just so you basically know how it works from start right through to finish. And what does LPG stand for? Liquid petroleum gas. Liquefied petroleum gas. Liquefied petroleum gas. Okay, so let's start. The thing we're going to start with is bottles. Right now, you have two types of bottles. We have a blue bottle, which is that one there, which is butane, and we have a red bottle, which is propane. Um, you'll tend to find the propanes are in a lot of motorhomes and the, the butane ones are in the camper vans, aren't they? Yeah, usually in, in an internal compartment. Yeah, now the difference between the two, we think personally propane's a better gas. It has a freezing rate of minus 45, where a blue bottle has a freezing rate of minus 5. So you will find the propane works better um, over the winter time. And it's now, a hotter gas, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now also, you can see you've got um, a pipe there. One pipe will not fit both gas bottles. It's two different pipes. So if you see that one there, that's for propane. And this one here is for butane. But we'll get into pipes in a second. So now you know the two different types of uh, gas, pro well, I've got propane and butane. So now you know about your bottles. Now all the bottles, gas bottles, have their own compartment. Uh, we have an outside compartment and we also have an internal compartment. So mainly on motorhomes, it's an outside, on camper vans, it's normally internal. So on a motorhome, here's our compartment. It'll always have an LPG sticker on the outside to show that it is where the gas is stored. And then if we open it up, what you will find in the compartment, it will have drop vents. Basically, the reason being is LPG is heavier than air. So if we do get a leak, it can drop down and go out the bottom of the van. And we do have a lip on the compartment as well to create a well, and it is always sealed. So there's your compartment on your motor arm. Let's grab a look at the camper van internal. So as you can see, you've the internal one, which has its own box. Again, LPG sticker. And then if we open it up, this is where the LPG lives, same type of principle. We've got a seal there going around. We do have a drop vent in, and then we have got the lip as well. So it's two different ways, but basically the principles are the same. Right, we know about propane and butane. Um, we know about the gas compartments. Now in order to get gas going into the motor home, so you can do your cooking or put your heating on or your hot water, we have our gas bottle. Now in order then to get gas into the van, we have a gas hose which then goes to a regulator. So I've got two gas hoses here. Basically, each gas hose will have a production date, as you can see here, 2021. It's recommended they should be replaced every five years. And here's one we've took off the van here. You can see the production date there, 2012. That should have been changed quite a while ago. So basically, the gas, the gas hose goes onto the, the bottle and then that goes into the regulator. So we've now spoke about gas hoses. The gas hose from the bottle now is going to the regulator. They see our regulator there and then it basically we've got the pipe then going into the motor home or camper van. So regulator, what is a basic one? What a regulator does is it regulates the bottle pressure and brings it down to working pressure in the motor home or camper van, which is normally anywhere between 30 and 37 millibar. Now a good tip for you, basically all the additives, it is additives in cap. Yeah. All the additives in the in, in a bottle when you're driving along are all shaken up. So don't ever switch your gas bottle on straight away. Wait 10 minutes or 15 minutes before you switch your bottle on. Because what will happen is they'll all sink to the bottom. Now if you switch it on straight away, you'll get all the additives into the regulator 
which is the, there is a little filter in there and then it clogs up the filter and then that's why you have to have a new regulator. It's like drinking it out of a barrel of beer, isn't it, if it's not been settled? Because <laughs> you get all the rubbish in that, don't you? Right, let's move on. <laughs> so, we had a gas bottle. We had a gas hose which goes to the regulator and then from the regulator we have the pipe that sends the gas down down the out of the bottom of the van and then as you can see here up into the van and then this feeds to what's known as a manifold and then we have two pipes going off the manifold so if you see the snowflake there that is that pipe there is going to the fridge and if you see the little boilery thing there that is going to the heating system now if I close these taps, we stop the flow of gas going to those appliances. And these are really useful for when we're actually doing gas tests. So if we do a gas test and we find we've got a leak, we can isolate each appliance and then switch each one on. So then if we switch the fridge one on, for example, and we're finding a leak there, then we know we've got a leak coming from the fridge. So there you go, manifolds. So, manifold. We've now got the gas coming through the manifold, going through the pipes, up to the various appliances. So what we need to do now is to get the appliances working. And to create a flame, we need three things. We need oxygen, we need a gas, and we need an ignition. Once we've got those three, we can then create a flame. So we've got our oxygen, we've now got our gas, and now we need the ignition. There's the ignition, and there's the flame. Now, safety. Basically, if we starve that flame of oxygen, it will then start to burn its own products, which will then create carbon monoxide. Now, because ovens and hobs haven't got a flue, you can't use these as a heat source to heat up the van, um, where the fridge and also the heating system have their own flue. Right, as we explained about flues and about needing oxygen, a balanced flue is what all your heaters are, they're a balanced flue. Basically, it draws air for combustion into the appliance through the outer flue, and then the products of combustion are sent out of the van through the inner flue. It's what's called a balanced flue. So it's drawing air from outside into the appliance itself, not into the van. So the appliance doesn't burn any oxygen out of the van, it's burning oxygen through there and bringing the products out. That way it's a perfectly safe appliance. Oh, nice and warm that is, Kevin did. I know, you're not moved from there for about an hour. I know, and warm. <laughs> so, um, quick guide to LPG, from yeah. the gas bottle, to the compartments, to the regulator, to the manifold, to actually how the flame works, a couple of little safety tips there. Yeah. Um, I hope it's give you a basic understanding of how everything works in your motor home and camper van. So enjoy the video, and have subscribe. Safe, have safe trips. Yeah, and don't, don't, get, get, like don't us, get using them whatever. cookers for heating your van up. Don't. Exactly, I'm stopping here, Kev. Yeah, plus the fact you put lots of condensation in your van if you have your cooker on as well. Stop it, stopping here. Yeah, all right. You all stop right. There. Yeah. See you in the but next don't video. put your nose too close because you'll be breathing it in. <laughs>